Okay everyone, so in this video you and I are going to talk a little bit about searching in React and creating a search field. So let's get into it. Now we will cover creating a search field first and foremost and then we will talk a little bit about sending data to the server, basically how we get the query from the browser over to the server get and how we get the results from that server and how we show that to the user. And then, yeah, well, that, that's basically it really. Now, when it comes to searching, it is a really tricky thing. It's, I argue, one of the harder things in programming to get right. So we are just going to do a basic search algorithm that will be pretty okay for, our, for most use cases. So let's just dive in and see what we have here. So we basically have a, this project structure here. So let's start by looking at the server, which is just this file that listens on port 3000 and it requires the application, which we have here which is an express server and then we import a basically just a JSON file of a bunch of words. Let's just look at that very quickly. Now this is a massive list of a bunch of English words just so we have some data to search for. And then yeah we get the path and then we start setting things up. So we use the express static middleware so that we can get our static files such as CSS and you know that sort of thing. This is that directory we were serving from. We'll check out that in just a moment. And so when we hit the root endpoint, we are simply going to send a static index.html file, and that's basically it. And then finally, we have a search endpoint. So this is where, for those those of you who are a little bit new to this, this is the way that you do routing on the web. So you basically declare a bunch of endpoints that if you contact this endpoint, if you send a request from from the browser to this URL pattern, the this function will run and anything inside of it will happen. So if I go to slash like this, I will get my index.html file. If I go to slash search, well, what's going to happen is that we're going to grab all the words that we saw earlier. We're going to go through them and filter them. So we go through each word and then we create a new regex and we sh we basically declare that, all right, anything that starts with whatever came in as request.query.q, which basically means that if you create a if you if when the request comes in com, comes in we're going to check the query parameters for the queue variable and whatever's inside of that and then we're going to test that against the word so we only grab the things that come in in the queue variable that's it and we return a results list of all the words that are matching whatever we're searching for and then we return that result that's the entire application and then we export the application so we can import it in the server let's briefly just look at the webpack config that we use to build our react application so we have this entry point which is this file over here we'll look at that in just a moment and we declare our output which is going to be the public directory so we create the bundle file that you see here whenever we basically run webpack and then we just use Babel loader in order to transpile our JSX into regular old JavaScript that the browser can understand. And in order for that to work, we set this Babel RC file to React. We can actually just look at the dependencies really quickly. So in order for all of this to work, we use Babel core, Babel loader you saw in just like two seconds ago. And then we have Babel preset React, which is the thing that we use, which we declare here in Babel RC in order to actually do the transpilation of our JSX. And then we have Express, and then we have React, and finally React DOM, which is the thing that we use to actually render something to the page. Now, let's look at the bundle file. As you can see here, this is just Webpack's outputted content. We're not going to walk through this because that's a, learning webpack and all this stuff is an entire differently it's, it's an entire video series in of itself. And then we have the index file which is just a static index file with a root element and where we import the bundle.js file which is going to contain all our JavaScript. We have a very basic styles or main.css file that does some very basic styling to just get something on the page. And then finally we have our entry point, which is search. And all it does is that it imports 
it goes to source components and grabs search which is this component over here that's our entire application now if I go to my browser like this and I refresh this page here you can see that all it is is this little application where I can do something like foo and I hit enter and then I'm presented with a bunch of different words that yeah that, that's basically it so let's just have a look at how this actually what just happened when I searched for foo like this did you notice that this little in the network tab here we saw that this happened here so what's what, what if we just look at that for a moment so what's actually happening now is that I just sent a network request from my browser to my server and I said all right go to slash search and then we have this question mark which basically declares that all right I'm going to going to declare a query parameter or a query variable now and it's going to be Q and I'm going to set that equal to foo and as we saw earlier there if you remember that's what's happening here so what I just did was that I just hit this function here with my search or with that network request I came into this this method on my server and I ran all this logic and I grabbed the Q variable which is foo that's all I did and then I went through all of the words and I got back everything that had or others that started with foo that's basically it and as you can see these are all the words that it found that has, starts with foo yeah no more magic than that but let's get into the actual code or the actual react application code here so the way that I structure things is that I create a components directory and then usually I have my top level components like this so let's open search so first and foremost we have our index.html file which is where the entry point to my component exists so I grab react react dom and then I have two components here I have a component called search form and a component called results and then I grab something called API which is going to be a file that holds all of my network requests now this is a practice that I like to use for my components because I, I, I usually declare an API file of some sort for and I keep everything that I need in order to do network calls in one place so I can because what's beautiful about that is that different components might want to do different types of network requests and sometimes you want to share network requests so it's just a practice that I use fairly often and all it is is a function that it's an async function that takes in some type of query and then it as we saw earlier this is where that network request actually fires off so you go to localhost 3000 you do the search with the query parameter you grab the JSON and then you return the JSON easy PC so and then I have this components directory which holds my results and my search form but let's watch through the logic here first and foremost so we declare a application which simply extends react component and we'll walk through this in just a moment and then at the end here we basically use react dom to render app into the to the root of of the page and as we saw earlier here that's this element here in the index file so what's happening is that when this file is running or rather when the file hits the browser it's going to instantiate all of this logic and render it to the root element that that's our entire application basically so let's look at the constructor first and foremost so we start by setting up I, I, this is a practice that I think that you should be using because unfortunately the, this keyword is a little bit of a tricky one I'm not going to go too much into uh, why that is but just know for now that doing this by, by simply binding all of your uh, object methods w to the, this keyword at the start <coughs> is going to help you with keeping the, this keyword from being basically broken from using nested methods and, anonym and lambda functions virtually you can look into this on your own a little bit because this is a fairly common practice and then we have component wheel mount which basically is when the component itself is actually going to be mounted to the page and what we want to do is that we want to instantiate our state here which is fairly common so I set the queue 
ba basically the parameter that, or the variable that we're going to send to the server to an empty string and then we have something called data which is just going to be a place where we store all the words that are coming from the server and we start by just making that an empty array. Then we have a set query method which it, all it's going to do is it's going to take in an event and then it's going to call this dot set state and it's going to grab the target and the value of that event and set Q to to that value and then it's just in order to be consistent <coughs> and not overwrite our previous state we're simply going to set data to this dot state dot data where we are storing all the words that are coming from the server and then we have an async run search function which does virtually the same thing so s this set query method we're gonna look at just in just a moment what that actually does but run search is a little bit different because it's going to include a network request and so we do e prevent default so that we stop the form from submit submitting because this function is going to be used in the on submit callback or the unsubmit method handler e on our form so when I hit enter on my keyboard the search is actually going to happen but we don't want the search to actually submit the forms because the the default behavior of form tag is that if you have something in on submit or sorry if you hit enter if you submit the form it's going to actually refresh the page and we want we don't want to do that so we do prevent default to stop it from refreshing the page and then we use our api and we get, grab the search function we saw earlier with the Q variable from our state and this data here is going to be all our words and as we saw earlier we do the same thing we basically set Q to whatever it, it, it already is and then we set data to data finally we have our render method which is going to include a div just a header which is searcher and then we have our two components search form and results and a good rule of thumb here is to pass uh, to, to pass all the stuff that you need from higher up basically so that your components the subcomponents can be as dumb as possible just a good rule of thumb is to always pass as m all your methods and anything like doesn't have to live inside of the components itself to the component so basically what you can do is that you can can by doing this keep your meth your your components as dumb as possible and I'm not going to touch too much on exactly why this is a beneficial thing but it, it just just trust me this is a very good practice to to abide by so get into this habit of don't try to make your components too clever because if they're doing too much stuff inside of inside of themselves it, it gets a little bit tricky to maintain over time Anywho, let's look at the components now. So these are fairly easy. Let's start with the results, which is going to be the list of words. So we see here that if I go into my components in search and I open up the results, it has the same structure as I saw earlier. So I open up index, which is my entry point. Okay, and all it does is that it exports the component itself. Now this is a practice that I like to use quite a lot where basically the index file inside of my directory is always the entry point into the th into the component itself. So if I had more stuff that I wanted to export from this this directory, I would do all of that stuff here. That way, I can treat my component this directory as a small library, and I can actually always trust that it has the same interface for anybody who wants to use it. And that that that's a good thing. Consistency is a good thing. Alright, so first and foremost we see that this is a fairly straightforward component. It has itself a dependency to a component which is called result and all it is is a list and we get from our pr we get the proper props basically this is a pure react react, comp react component which is just a function that takes in an object called props and then we use destructuring to grab the results from that object which is what you saw here this is what ha it's happening this this is go this is basically our function which has a results and we push, put the data from the state into those results easy pc and then we map over those and we grab whatever is in, whatever is in the array in this case it's going to be a word and then we grab the index so that we can put the key of each item to i and then finally we basically set we, we add in the word to the results component 
and let's just look at the result this is super easy same thing again index file exports everything we want to export from the package or from the directory and all my component is doing is yeah it's basically a list element which grabs the children which is going to be the thing that you saw children is a special variable name in react land which basically means that if i have an opening tag and a closing tag anything in, be in between there is going to be converted into children and that's what's happening there in this case it's just the word so that that that's it it's basically just the word itself that we are looping over so those are the results let's look at the search form same thing again we have an index file repeating myself here but it's i think this is fairly fa fairly good to know about it's a, it's a very nice practice that i like quite a bit so my search form is going to depend on the search field and it takes in an on change and an on submit which is what we saw earlier right here these two methods are being taken in as input parameters on our props and then we have our on submit function that takes that function and then we have a search field that simply has an on change declared which takes in the on change and if we open up components same deal again we have an index file and we have our components or with the component itself which takes in an on change and it's just an input field that has a type of text the placeholder of search a name set to Q that's just arbitrary it's not actually required but I, I just kind of it's a practice idea use and then finally we have the on change and that's our entire application so what's now happening is that if we look at yeah so what's gonna happen now is that as I type into the search field the on change is going to run with set query which is going to, as I said earlier, whatever value is, every time I type something. So it basically now query is set to F and now next, you know, now it's set to FO and, and basically to foo. And when I hit enter, it's going to run the query as we saw here. I can set it to anything like so. Sorry for that, yeah. And if it doesn't find anything, it doesn't return anything, basically. That's the entire application. So what's happening, as I said, is that as I type on my keyboard, the on change is running. And then when I finally hit enter, we actually do the submit, which is going to run the search, as we saw earlier, which goes just grabs the API, goes to the network, and gets back the data. So this is a fairly easy implementation of a search in React Land. The limitation here is that since we're doing a reg regex search, you will have to, you kind of have to rem remember that spelling and stuff of that nature becomes fairly important because if I type, if I mistype a word or something like that, the regex matching is going to, it's not going to work. So if you wanted to do something like Google's search engine type of search or something like that, that's much fancier and out of scope for this video but this will get you started and it works for a fairly simple application for the most part. But more advanced searching requires a little bit of more trickery and we'll cover that in another video. So hopefully you found this useful and have a great day.